Hello, and welcome to another short puppet review. I'm Avery, and I'm Lashing Eye Lucy, and we're covering another scary movie for Scare You Airy. Yeah, today we're covering um, Gretel and Hansel. Hansel and Gretel. Which one was first? Gretel was first for this one. Yeah, Gretel and Hansel. The trailers looked made it look super creepy and super weird and maybe a little bit gory all at the same time. So it was interesting enough for us to want to go. And it was the best thing we've seen so far. Out of the three movies we've seen together, this was by far the best one. But not for the reasons that you think. Yeah, I actually didn't get that scared during this movie. And that's because this movie doesn't really focus so much on shock value or freaky sheen, but it more focuses on the overall ambiance of the film and the growing tension between the characters. We follow Gretel and her younger brother Hansel as they move off into the world because their father is sick and their mother is almost dead too, and she wants them to be able to get jobs and eat food and, you know, be able to survive. So she forcefully sends them on their way and they venture off into the woods in search of a new home. And it's along this journey that they meet all kinds of unusual characters, including the witch from the original fairy tale. Yeah, a super interesting part about it, it what I liked, is that there's actually a different fairy tale put into this one as well. At the beginning, Gretel is doing this overall narration throughout the film, which shows that we're mainly focusing on her and her point of view, which is really neat, which and that also explains why it's Gretel and Hansel, not Hansel and Gretel. Um, Hansel gets some screen time too, but Gretel is definitely the focus here. Yes, most of the film revolves around her and her character and her growth as they encounter things in the woods and especially as they start spending time with the witch. And like Lucy said, there's this fairy tale that Gretel tells in the beginning that ties into the witch that they encounter as well and her story and basically how she came about to be doing what she's doing. Yeah. We actually don't want to give too much away because it was pretty good. So no spoilers here. This is a spoiler-free review, but we, we wanted to put it out because it, it was not what I thought it would be. Yeah, we were, I was expecting something super scary. I was expecting something super gory. I got a little bit of that. There was a little bit of gore, but it wasn't so much gore that it freaked Avery out. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I just... I didn't think about it during the scene that there was the gore. There was really just one scene that was kind of gore, but again, there wasn't shock factor. And that's actually really refreshing about this movie is it kind of deterred from what we expect from horror movies for being with loud jump scares and some big demonic possession in the background or something that's going to come out and get you and freak you out at every single turn. But the freakouts here were a lot more nuanced and shuttle. So it gave the underlying feeling of unease, but it never outright went, oh, this is a bad place. Because the witch does do some things for them and helps them grow as people, which is interesting. So she wasn't entirely bad, but she, she didn't have very good intentions in the long run either. But it was cool to see how these characters were actually really well-rounded, like Avery said, and it's very nuanced and subtle. Um, the color palettes were really pleasing. The trailer made it look like the color palettes would be kind of gross, but actually the cinematography in this is really cool and really good. Um, they have, the, the music choices were interesting too. They go through a couple of different cadences and there was like this one that had an 80s synth theme to it for some reason. I'm not sure what that was about, but it was interesting. Anytime it popped up, it certainly made me focus in a little more because anytime it came up would be when there would be more magical demonic entities going on. So it was kind of a moment of, hey, something creepy and magical is happening here. You better, you better focus on this. Yeah, but the star of the show here is really Gretel and the Witch. A lot of the movie focuses on them and Gretel especially. In fact, the first 45 minutes or so of the movie, we don't even meet the witch at all. We're just focusing on Gretel as she's trying to take care of Hansel and finding a place for them to stay and survive at the same time. It really shows how she's been taking on this caretakerish role of mother to her younger brother 
and this movie is kind of her way of discovering herself as a single person and how to kind of break away from that maternal role since she is not his mother but his sister. Yes, but at the same time she doesn't turn her back on Hansel or anything either. And again, we don't want to spoil too much, so we're just trying to bring up the, the main storylines, the main character arcs of this film, and how they dive in further once they encounter the witch and discover all these other sorts of underlying creepy things going on. And of course, there, are, there seems to be other witches too, but those aren't mentioned. It's, again, it's all very subtle, which is really cool. Yeah, and the way that Short of the Witch was presented in this movie was pretty different too. I haven't seen it presented as such in other witch-oriented movies before from what I can remember or anything with witch content in it, like I think of American Horror Story Coven when I think of witches normally, uh, yeah, yeah, this is nothing like that, nothing at all. This is, this, this is nowhere along the lines of American Horror Story. You don't even watch American Horror Story. Well, I watched a little bit. All right, set, say favorite season on count of three. One, two, three, Asylum! <sighs> I knew it! Asylum's the best. We got off track. What were we talking about? Gretel and Honchel. Right, right, right. So overall, it was a really good movie, just for not the reasons we thought it would be, but it's definitely an experience to go and see for yourself. So I'd, I'd say go check it out. It's definitely not what you're expecting, and you might be pleasantly surprised by what you get. Yes, um, in terms of the horror aspect, I mean, there is still horror there because, like we mentioned, there is the underlying tension and unease throughout most of the movie, so you still feel that, but if you want something more in your face, this isn't going to be it. But for those of you that are looking for something a little bit more different, as something a little bit more unique, Gretel and Hansel is definitely a movie to go check out. Thank you for watching this short puppet review. As you can see, Scaryuary is going through February as well because it ends in Aerie. So, with it, do you think how many horror movies can come out in February? Uh, I saw a couple in the works. I don't think any of them are going to be as interesting as Gretel and Hansel, but you never know. Well, if you like this video, go ahead and put a pause up and press that like button. Comment and subscribe and all that good stuff. I can say comment because this this is a review not for kids that we're, we're talking about a scary movie. Ha ha ha. What would they even comment about? I don't know. Just comment random stuff. Say first. If you don't say first, I'm going to say first first. Lucy, that's completely pointless. I know that's what makes it fun. All right. Well, with that, we will see you for the next review. So what, what else are you going to see? Uh, I think I'm supposed to see Sonic the Hedgehog on Valentine's Day. <laughs> There's a horror movie if I ever heard one. Good luck, buddy! <laughs> Sucker.